Hi everyone and welcome to the conclusions for the tests ran on the Athlon XP 3200 Plus and the Pentium 4 3.2 GHz. By late spring 2003 the frequency race had passed the 3 GHz mark. With the introduction of the AMD 3200, although clocked at uh, 2.2 GHz, uh, for the first time the performance rating exceeded uh, 3 GHz. It was just a month later that uh, Intel introduced its own uh, 3.2 GHz CPU. And we've seen them perform on top of the line motherboards. I need to mention that the AMD boards uh, used in my tests were showing some signs of wear because uh, both of them were uh, used extensively during their lifetimes. Also, the IC7 Max 3 did show some signs of wear, but it passed all the tests with flying colors, scoring uh, the maximum points in most of the benchmarks. And now the CPUs. Well, uh, PC Mark 2002 uh, shows Intel being ahead of AMD in both uh, CPU power by 15% uh, and uh, memory bandwidth uh, more than 40%. Uh, but the hard drive looks almost even. Moving on to Sandra's uh, CPU synthetic tests, we start to get a better picture of what the, of where the difference comes from. Uh, but only when reaching the CPU bench uh, with the tests for the arithmetic uh, logical unit and the floating point unit, it's all clear. AMD has a very strong uh, arithmetic logical unit, constantly pulling ahead of uh, Intel by almost 5%. But its floating point unit is less impressive, losing by almost 20% to Intel's CPU. This combined with uh, Intel's better bandwidth and uh, faster uh, level 2 uh, cache uh, translates into slightly better productivity and gaming results for Intel. Although most of the benchmarks were focused on gaming performance, some uh, office productivity and content creation tests were ran. Uh, the main concern were the gaming tests because, uh, let's be honest, who is interested in office productivity uh, for a 20-year-old CPU? But for our future tests, we're going to include some benchmarks for this feature. Diving into the game benchmarks uh, on a similar configuration, the same hard drive, ra RAM, and uh, video card, uh, Intel pulls ahead of the AMD in 3D Mark with more than 15% uh, and uh, just 8% in Aqua Mark 3. Code Creatures and Unreal Tournament 2003 benchmarks look, uh, look like they are really testing the graphics card. Uh, but Comanche 4 shows a 20% increase for the Intel, while um, X2 shows only 13% increase. Moving on to actual games and testing DirectX performance, we get a good lead for Intel in the popular Quake Engine games, ranging from 10% to sometimes 25%. Uh, the game where AMD shines through is uh, Serious Sam The Second Encounter, where it has a 12% lead. Uh, testing the OpenGL looks a bit better for AMD in actual games. Uh, the first three groups are uh, benchmark programs and uh, the last three are actual games. The OpenGL uh, tests uh, had some issues because the initial driver I used for all the tests had some sort of frame limiter and uh, the later version I replaced it with uh, allowed it to be disabled. The conclusion after all these tests was that AMD may have been a little hasty with their performance rating and constantly seeing a 10 to 15 percent difference in favor of the hyper-threading disabled Intel makes me believe that the true contender for the AMD is uh, somewhere between the Pentium 4 uh, 2.8 gigahertz or uh, the 3 gigahertz processor. Um, the launch price for these two chips was uh, $460 for the AMD and almost uh, $700 for the Intel. And that's still an important factor when deciding upon a CPU.
As a joke, I guess AMD also took the price into consideration when calculating the performance rating. Good thing it was not worth more than 10 to 15 percent. At the same time, the 2.8 GHz Intel was selling for around $275. Furthermore, just 8 months later, the 3.4 Pentium 4 had a launch price of um, $420. And I guess by that time AMD was uh, cornered into significantly lowering the price for its uh, top socket uh, 462 CPU. Overclocking wise, uh, the Intels look like they can take a lot more uh, FSB, far more than anything um, the AMD boards can. But considering the real frequencies, I think that Intel uh, needs a far greater frequency range to catch up to uh, AMD's overclock. My opinion is that price per value AMD wins. And by going uh, lower on the range of available CPUs, this uh, thing becomes more apparent. No wonder the AMD 2500 Plus was so popular back then. Nowadays the CPUs can be found uh, fairly easy, um, but good luck finding an IC7 or an AN7 board. And when you do find them, the sellers offer them for a price so high that it's almost not even worth considering. One thing I forgot to mention was that uh, Intel uh, has a superior set of instructions the SSE2 that makes it uh, more modern and this CPU can even be used in uh, Windows 8 or uh, Windows 10 setups. But be aware, this is going to be a very very slow CPU. With that being said, the comparison is over and I'm gonna continue with some of the issues I've encountered. The worst motherboard of this group was the N7 that although got the better AMD scores, undervolts a lot and even fails sometimes to boot into Windows because of the reduced CPU vol voltage. So it urgently needs some new capacitors. For the Litec um, 4400Ti, I initially picked the 4403 driver. Uh, but it turned out that this one was creating some limitations when using the OpenGL. So I switched to 6693 and I needed to redo most of the tests um, that were already, already completed. Even after the drivers eliminated the frame limiter, some tests still produced uh, lower than expected scores. Overclocking was a nightmare because I started this series without planning any form of overclock. I know that close serial numbers on the same CPU can produce very different results when overclocked. Most of the times it's down to luck and perseverance and it takes a lot more time than what I've allowed and allocated for this series. Some things I need to improve for further videos are a more detailed presentation of the motherboard CPU, a consistent view of overclocking across all motherboards, Maybe reduce the number of game tests, especially those that test a similar feature like the Quake 3 engine games. Increase the office productivity tests. When I'm testing a CPU, maybe I should use a graphics card released in the same year. And when I test a graphics card, I should uh, run uh, DirectX version tests specifically designed for the Direct DirectX version of the card. I should always stick to the 1920 by 1080 resolution uh, whenever possible and uh, the game presentation should uh, keep this resolution in order to maintain the aspect ratio over the YouTube uh, video. That means I'll have to probably introduce a second more powerful graphics card for the game sequences. I should try to expand my views on CPUs to include later generation that has all the instructions that the competition has. For example, I should have also included an AMD that has SSC2 instructions um, like the Athlon 64 that was released uh, in uh, later 2003 and early 2004. With that being said, I'm going to continue this series by adding some more CPUs running at 3.2 GHz um, or having a performance rating of 3.2 uh, and having them benchmarked in the same hardware setup as the AMD 3200 Plus and the P4 3.2. Thank you and see you next time.